Good evening, everyone. Here I'm Rana Boss. Uh, again, we are live. I am live from Dubai. It is great honor to interview really a great personality, Professor Weiner. Uh, Professor Weiner, you know, all know, he's uh, one of the pioneer of bariatric surgery at the globe and really live legend bariatric surgeon. And it is great honor. And uh, really, I appreciate uh, Professor always supportive, encouraging, and uh, his role, no doubt, you all know, all those who are uh, involved in bariatric surgery, they know better than me the role of uh, Professor Weiner. Uh, sir, it is really great honor for me to interview, and this is, a, in my opinion, great opportunity for myself to know more about Ruan Wai, gastric bypass. Sir, please, over to you, sir. Sir? Yeah, it was not stable, the connection. Um, I, I started with a bariatric surgery in the end of the 70s. I started the first studies about intestinal bypass surgery. This was published in a book in 1982. Uh, but we finished this type of surgery. Not uh, because our own experience were not so bad, but many reports of liver failure. Then we had a new start with a laparoscopy, with a lap, uh, lap bending. So in 1992, I performed the first lap uh, colectomy. In 93, I went to Belgium to meet the Kubella chef, and I learned about uh, laparoscopic adjustable bending. This was a new start. So we created the first bariatric center in Germany. And in the 90s, uh, we had more than 50% of all procedures in Germany were done in, in, my, in my hospital. Then I was uh, founder of the German Society and you know, you all the function in IFSO with IFSO World Congress 2011 and uh, European chapter and the IFSO World, World President. But uh, with the bypass, with the Ruin Y Gassi bypass, uh, we started late in uh, Germany in the year 2000. Uh, we had the first report uh, from another surgeon, Kurenkov, from Cologne, uh, for the first three cases. It was a very disaster, uh, disaster of outcome. And then uh, I invited Hans Lönnrod from Sweden. You know, Anna Wittkloff was the first one who was from the laparoscopic gastric bypass in uh, 1995 in the United States. In 1996, it was Hans Lönnrod in Sweden. So I invited him and we performed together the first uh, laparoscopic gastric bypass, and it became the main procedure uh, of the 90s and uh, also in the beginning of the year 2000 and after. Then the sleeve became in 2004, um, more and more uh, the leading procedure, and we started also with the mini gastric bypass in 2004. So we have done all the procedures uh, for a long, long uh, period. So, and this is a, a long history and many things changed in the last three or four decades. Sir, sir, really it is great honor. Now I am talking with someone more than I think five decades. So about five decades you are involved in, you have been involved in bariatric surgery and really it is great honor at that time initially with open and then uh, a minimal invasive surgery and definitely today it will be a great session and in my opinion it is great opportunity for myself for my viewers so this video will remain also on our youtube channel and now we are also live on our facebook group uh, global laparoscopy and many of uh, <coughs> big names that uh, i can see are live with us professor laurent layani is live with us and many others from different parts of the globe. They are live and they are watching live our interview. Sir, really it is great honor. Uh, sir, because uh, our viewers are also newcomers due to this, some questions are basic question for convey the message because this we are covering also South Asia, Middle East, some countries as Africa. So due to this, this is very important to hear from your side. So if someone want to go for Ruan Y gastric bypass, at least minimum setup, which setup they need to start such a surgery? 
Yeah, the minimum, uh, no, it's, it's, everything is changing. At the time, at the moment, you need only one surgeon, yeah? And you need uh, somebody who uh, leads the, the, the camera system. Uh, I saw this uh, week uh, a robotic wound wide gastric bypass uh, in the south of Germany in a small hospital uh, in uh, 45 minutes. And it was an excellent procedure. So at the learning curve, it's, it's, uh, it takes a bit longer. But you need uh, one surgeon and one cameraman for the for the robotic. You need more surgeons. Yeah. This is uh, important. Maybe at least three, three uh, uh, surgeons, and you need this is important two laparoscopic units, not only one. Yeah. Uh, if you are, I saw once I was in a university hospital in the south of Germany, and then we had an electrical problem, and the tower was out of order during a surgery. This is a disaster. So if you have no second, I mean, in a university hospital, you had a second one, uh, it takes a while, and then after a few minutes, we can continue the surgery. This is very important to know. Thank you, sir. Sir, sir again, so because uh, we divided our question in three groups, so pay up our patient selection, then some technical points we will discuss. Then we will discuss about post-op of ruin by gastric bypass, Regarding patient selection, according to your protocol and because you are uh, someone who give us guidelines, so according to your opinion, and after this five decades, this is a huge, I think, uh, contribution in bariatric surgery, relative and absolute contraindication of ruin by gastric bypass. And what is your opinion about chain smokers? Yes. Uh, we are relative and absolute contraindication for wound by gastric bypass for sure. Uh, but I will never talk about compliance. Compliance, if somebody is certain talk that the patient has no compliance and therefore you need no, this, not this type of seizure or another one, this sort of blames the patient. This uh, compliance. You know. the smoker is a real problem and this is a re relative uh, contraindication better not to do. Better not to in all types of bypass, rule my gastric bypass and MGB. MGB. Better than with the sleeve patients. The sleeve patients have less problems. Uh, there are no alterations with, uh, uh, for, for smokers. This is clear. Absolute uh, contraindication is just if you perform the upper endoscopy and you see fluoride uh, alterations. So then you have not to perform the surgery. My personal opinion is that every surgeon should perform the upper endoscopy in the beginning, three, four weeks before he make a decision for the surgery. And he has to discuss with the patient the findings. This is completely different. You, the surgeons will see there's a very huge volume of the stomach with a very huge fundus. And you see that the pylorus is closing uh, as a normal closing mechanism. This is a good candidate for sleeve gastrectomy. But uh, if you do, a, you have a very small stomach and the uh, duodenum is all the time open, it's a better uh, idea to perform a sleeve gastrectomy. This patient should be uh, go undergo a wound wide gastric bypass. Um, you know, smokers are not general candidates for wound wide bypass, and you know the frequency of alteration after. It's too high, and also perforation. If you saw perforations, uh, immediately you saw all the two, two reasons. First of all, smokers, much more often is aspirin, aspirin-containing medication, or rheumatic indication. If somebody is performing a wound by gastric bypass, and he's not informing the patient that he had never take aspirin as a tablet, he can dissolve it and drink it dissolved. But if you not inform the patient about this risk point, it's a, it's a mistake. Yeah. Sir, this is great, really, and also message. And sir, another question regarding uh, post-menopause uh, female patients, because maybe they are suffering with the, uh, osteoporosis. Have you any protocol for such a cases uh, to evaluate their bone or like this bone densitometry or something like this? Uh, are you care more about these such a cases or no, like uh, general patients? No, no, no it's not. Uh, we have uh, in our standard 
medications after surgery. We have all the time vitamin D3. Yeah, and it's very important not to estimate the vitamin D3 in the blood. So you need the parathormone level. And if the parathormone level is increased, you have to increase vitamin D3. Um, and this is, you can solve the problem safe. We have much more problems if you're prolonging the BDPUNK at the climp. What we are doing now, like the MGB, we're seeing the deficiencies for vitamin K, K1 and K2. And this is a little bit of a problem. And vitamin A is easy to handle. Yeah? And uh, vitamin D3 will, will, will be supplemented. But uh, it's a osteoporosis, yeah, it's maybe it's a reason, but you have to inform that the patient has to take vitamin D3 and calcium from the beginning. <coughs> and you have to control the parathormone level. If the parathormone level is high, you can perform a densimetry, yes. But uh, better, better is to do it earlier as, and you have to dose it 20,000 uh, units uh, vitamin D3 per day. It's the highest level what you can achieve, and you can do it. It's expensive, or you can do it. Yeah, yeah, sir. No, why, why, what is why I am highlighting this because now uh, you can't believe how many people are watching you, and definitely this video will be because one of the concern after such a hypoabsorptive surgeries, MGB or one by gastric bypass, is micronutrient deficiency, and one of the my, micronutrient deficiency it is vitamin D, calcium, iron deficiencies. If someone is already suffering with osteoporosis, she's also in post-menopause period. So are you preferred to go for sleep? Because she has no reflux, she has no GERD. We, we have option. We can also go for sleep. We can also go for Ruan Y. Are you preferred in such a case, a sleep gastrectomy or no, no issue with supplements we can go ahead for? One my I will uh, never um, you man, uh, exclude from the option to have a ruined white gastric bypass. You must be informed when you have the chance to get dumpings, uh, the, the, the trauma, internal hernia. Uh, and uh, in contrast to uh, the sleeve gastrectomy, uh, you need nearly uh, nearly all patients, not all, yeah, or a high percentage, you need a second surgery uh, later on. You know, one third of all the patients uh, need a renal surgery in uh, effect of reflux disease, as de novo uh, reflux disease. One third of the patient will have weight regain, and the last third, one third of the patients has large, uh, weight regain and reflux. So uh, if you're looking after uh, five, uh, five, six, seven, ten years, you see a high incidence from second uh, procedures. The same as we saw in the beginning with ruin by gastric bypass with a uh, short bilia pancreatic limb. In the United States, we had 30 centimeters. This is traditional. In Germany, we had 50. And in the French school, and also in Switzerland, we had 80 centimeters. And this makes a difference. We are wondering, Kevin Higa makes a pouch smaller, 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 micro pouch. And Michel Suter in Switzerland, he is making a normal gastric bypass, but he's take, as usual, 80 centimeters. At the end point, after five years, the results are much better because there's a component of malabsorption. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. Sir, regarding this, uh, uh, so if we see a limitation, have you any limitation, age limitation? Adolescents are uh, age, older age, so which? No. 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 no I, I remember the youngest, uh, um, was 12 years old in a, in a male. I'm not doing so in a, in a female. In a female, we have done a monogenetic and other diseases, a sleeve gastrectomy, just to see uh, all the micro uh, uh, differences and so on in the long, in long term. Run. And the uh, oldest patient we came from Kuwait, she was 87 years old. And this was just. She was uh, laying in the bed. Nobody was able to, to move her. Uh, and uh, this was in the beginning of 2002 or 2003. And we are performing gastric bypass at this time, not to sleep. This was also a good candidate for sleep, just yeah. to make a better handling of the patient. Yeah? She was uh, not able to walk and she was laying all the time in the bed. 
you know, but you can talk or you, nobody bring you food. Eh? The patient is crying and somebody in the family yeah. bring, will bring the food. <laughs> yeah, and this is especially also in the Arabic families who bring a lot of support and sweet things. Yeah, <laughs> And uh, so this was a good decision. And uh, she had done a great and she uh, became uh, 94 years. Uh, she survived uh, eight years and died of some better myocardial infarction or something else. Yeah, yeah, it's excellent, excellent, sir. And it is great experience, sir. Already you have mentioned, so all of your bariatric patients, you prefer to do pre-op endoscopy. What is your protocol about H. pylori eradication and why you eradicate H. pylori? Yeah, we have changed this <coughs> protocol in the last years. In the beginning, we have done only just uh, upper, upper endos uh, endoscopy and take probes for helicopter. And we have taken eradication uh, for seven days. Uh, this time, Italy uh, and shame, or not the France shame, and then the patient came to the surgery. Now uh, we have the upper endoscopy with the uh, probes, and then the uh, patient comes again and needs an upper, uh, another upper endoscopy. And the eradication is the greatest point, is, um, but not the ulceration in the, in the at the anastomosis or something else plays a role. This is a cancer risk in the remnant stomach. If you're looking in the literature, for example, reports about cancer after gastric surgery, for this paper from Mozilla from Naples, you, know, you look for all the all the data in the literature, you make a meta-analysis, and you see that nearly uh, three thirds, uh, seventy-five percent of all cancers are in remnant. And also after a, a wound vicacy bypass. This place, uh, Helibacter is the greatest risk. This is shown. Yeah. And maybe also the bile reflux. If you have a wound vicacy bypass, you have a duodenogastral reflux into the remnant. Much more when after MGB. Now, MGB, MGB have a, a long, uh, narrow tube and a small, small remnant stomach. In the wound, why you have a very, very small gassy pouch, and nearly 80% uh, of the stomach is the remnant. And if the bile goes into, you can detect it with technetium, isotope measurement. Patient has chronic pain. You make upper endoscopy, you make everything, you make a laparoscopy, uh, to looking for internal hernia, to removing the gallbladder with the suspected stones, is still the same problem. And then you make an isotope investigation. You see there's a severe bile reflux from technetium into the remnant with a chronic gastritis. Then uh, you have to perform a gastrectomy. And I have, I have done my, my life many, many gastric bypasses um, with uh, cancer risk, uh, low invasive carcinoma or carcinoma in situ during biopsies. We have a biopsy protocol from six to eight biopsies for histological uh, investigation, especially in chronic gastritis. And if you see a risk, then you have to re remove the remnant. The, make a second, or in this in one procedure, bypass and resection of the remnant. Sir, excellent. Sir, my question regarding follow-up of uh, such a case who are positive H. pylori before surgery, and you eradicate, maybe after surgery, they will again, uh, so will be positive. Have you any protocol to follow such a cases after six months, after two years, three years, uh, follow their asymptomatic we, we, patient is, yeah. I, I have, I have I, I tried now with a uh, topic of cancer after MGB, after rural white gastric bypass, after all the gastric surgeries, we, uh, we are trying to ha have one upper endoscopy after one year, and then without symptoms every seven years. So I have seen many, many, if a patient has bile reflux in the MGB, is asymptomatic, then they have a control in two years. But you know, if you have done in a pleural, we make all the time uh, biopsies for a helibacter infection, but it doesn't play any role. If you have a helibacter infection in the as in the in the root in the GI root from the gastric pouch into the small intestine doesn't matter. The risk point is the remnant. And yeah. if the one has done the eradication, never uh, helicobacter will come back in the long root. 
with the pineal pancreas and then back to uh, the stomach. I understand. Yeah, yeah. Sir, another question. So this is because you uh, now highlighted there is chance of bile reflux in Ruan Y. So can we uh, close, not completely close, just narrow that entrum with stitch like uh, not, not completely close the uh, entrum, just because if we will close so definite, we need the passage of uh, this opening for remnant. Can we stitch that area, close that area, then there will be less chance of bile reflux after Ruan Y? Any uh, bile, bile reflux into the gastric pouch. In remnant. In remnant. Uh, yeah, into the remnant. Uh, uh, but I never see it. In remnant. Yeah, this is an interesting question. You know, we have, uh, I have done two and a half thousand approximately with my gastric bypass and I have never done so. Um, uh, we have many co workers. We are now uh, head of departments, Sofia Tirurido. Uh, she was doing at the end point of the MGB, all then the fixation of the um, um, efferent limb uh, to the antrum with the fixation to prevent a rotation of the of the uh, gastrojejunus to work, gastro yeah. for me. But uh, this is, uh, you know, these are things, uh, there are no studies. Somebody believe in some things. We are sh uh, surgical amulets. The same as brown anastomosis. If you have a stenosis and you have uh, obstruction, you can do it as an emergency case to solve the problem to do a brown anastomosis. If you have bile reflux in a MGB, it makes no sense to perform a brown anastomosis. Yeah. 80% of all the bile goes on a normal way, and maybe 20% will go directly from limb to limb. Uh, so I, have, I have this being, uh, we have some certain, uh, we have done very, very short um, um, uh, gastric pouches um, in uh, era, also in, in Iraq, uh, remember? And then we came for a redo surgery to Jordan. Uh, or before the war to Syria, and the surgeon, I know them very well, in Amman and in Damascus. But they have done, because they had education in Germany, they have performed a, a brown anastomosis. And then the patient uh, doesn't uh, have the solution. So they came, two of them, they came then to, to Frankfurt, and uh, it makes no sense. Uh, uh, it's a good, a good idea, Brown, as a German surgeon, uh, we like to honor him, but it doesn't work. Sir, thank you. Sir, now we will go for some technical question. So definitely this uh, <coughs> journey, this uh, five decade journey of bariatric surgery, definitely you have a lot of changes and evolution of your technique for one way gastric bypass. We are interested to hear about this. I know your gastric pouch is little longer and narrow as compared to others. Uh, so if possible to highlight your technique and also especially the size of gastro jejunostomy. Now, maybe there are three different periods. At the beginning, in the year 2000, we had a stand, a stand in Germany because all the bypass were done in our hospital with a billy punk uh, limb of 50 centimeters and uh, alimentary limb of 120 to 150 and uh, very short. Um, gastric uh, pouch of two centimeters. Two centimeters at the beginning, not calibrated. Yeah. Uh, not calibrated. Maybe uh, sometimes a little bit uh, to right to the left to the spleen. Yeah. But we had no calibration at this time. Uh, then we, we, we changed it. Then we started to, to calibrate uh, the pouch uh, with a 42 French. Bushi. Yeah, Bushi. And uh, we're going also very high, but not too high, yeah? two to three centimeters into the bursa mentalis, and then goes very near straight. But we had never done the micro pouch. Uh, we changed then uh, the, the last period, the uh, limb. And the pinipanker limb is now, if it's a patient who has a BM, uh, BMI of, uh, over 40, and, and, and also diabetics, You're doing the billy bang at limb at least 120 up to 150 centimeters. As a BMI over 50, 150. 
And uh, your question is, how long should be the elementary limb? And this is very interesting because the elementary limb should be from literature at least 60 centimeters and to be safe, we have done 70 centimeters. No, uh, there are uh, some certain that are done mistakes now. We are starting studies in some European countries to perform a room by bypass with a bill pack 50 and elementary 150. And the next patient has 50 bill pack attic uh, limb. Uh, sorry, 150 and only 50 elementary limb. Really? This is a mistake. This is a mistake. Yeah. From this study, uh, had saw two patients that came to Frankfurt, or not, or yeah. Offenbach, we have bioflux yeah. in a room by bypass. Yeah. Uh, to have a distance, we know this from the 20s of the last century. This is a study in Germany, we measured 60 centimeters and to be safe, 70 centimeters is to prevent uh, any type of, of uh, bioflux. Sir, excellent. Sir, regarding your gastric pouch, now the size, uh, length of your pouch is longer as compared to standard pouch. So what is my question regarding marginal ulcer? Because mm -hmm. one of the cause of marginal ulcer is uh, <coughs> in ruin by gastric bypass, marginal ulcer is acid-based, not bile-based. Yeah. So uh, have you any comparative study when your uh, pouch was micro size and now a little longer? Any change or no? Same, no issue, no problem. Uh, no issue, no problem. How we, we changed in the beginning? We have uh, after the surgery, we have all surgeries for three weeks PPI, and now we prolong it as uh, three months and uh, since the last year six months PPI after all procedures. And then we never saw any 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 problem. The most important thing is uh, that you have no part uh, of the, from the fundus side. It's only lesser curvature with a small I mean, a 42 uh, two French. It's a very very uh, small uh, diameter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's passing by the endoscope. Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's 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 enough to prevent um, acid well acid complications. Yeah, sir. Excellent, sir. Yes, definite. And this is also the message for our viewers. So post-op six month PPI, if you will use, then there will be less chance of uh, marginal ulcer. And that is really an issue after one by gastric bypass. Sir, regarding size of gastro jejunostomy, what is your size, uh, standard size, what you prefer? Uh, we are using a 30 millimeter uh, blue cartridge or of all the 45, <coughs> uh, but we are using a calibration tube. Uh, the calibration group for the anastomosis to perform a methylene blue test at the end. And this diameter of uh, this uh, sond is uh, 28 French. Uh, sometimes we are not available, we have 32 French. And uh, we're pushing this over and then we can soon the closure. And very, very uh, uh, large closing, a lot of wall, brushing this very small, it's very, as a small must be, but after two years, every anastomosis looks like the same. Looks like the same, excellent, excellent, sir. Everything will be dilated, except yeah. if you do a primary uh, ring uh, yeah. or a minimizer a procedure, but this is normal, yeah. Sir, some of authors, so you know also better than me. So this hand swimming technique for gastro jejunostomy with the absorbable suture, what they are claiming, what they are claim, they claim, so maybe there will be less chance of marginal ulcer if we use uh, this uh, uh, path. So to do gastro jejunostomy, because when we use stapler <coughs> with titanium, and so foreign body and something like this. I have no idea. What's your opinion about this? As we have done this from the beginning with a posterior wall, linear stapled, and then the closure hand soon. Uh, we are not using running sutures. Yeah, we have stay, uh, single single sutures. You know, the first I have a bad experiences with running sutures and anastomosis. Uh, the first case, what we have done with Hans Renrod. Uh, in 2000, he came and we had two twins, sisters. 
We had both a gastric banding before. One has a Swedish band, another has a lap band. And Hans Lernold performed the uh, uh, removal of the Swedish band, and there was a lot of adhesions. And then he performed the gastric bypass with a running suture and back side and a running suture of the front side with a lapro clip. And then the next day, I performed another procedure, also um, with a running suture, but I was nodding at the end. So uh, Hans Lernold was uh, moving back to Sweden. Uh, one day later, the patient became peritonitis. Finally, she, she was laying on the ICU more than six weeks with open uh, abdominal peritoneum. And the running suture have a high risk. We, have, we are using also um, uh, material zero, uh, one zero, yeah, and yeah. not using yeah, Because if you have a quest of his running suture, yeah. uh, it's a risk point. Okay, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, sir, what about? Uh, Hiatal hernia, if someone is suffering with hiatal hernia and there is large size hiatal hernia and you are going to, patient is morbid obese, uh, which size you prefer to repair a hiatal hernia during rural migastric <coughs> it's, a, it's a very uh, a large hernia and the patient is not too obese. As a, uh, on a mean beam, I was 50. As a patient has a BMI of 60 or 70, giant, um, BMI or BMI of 80 or more. In this case, I will not do it. I will uh, uh, watch the patient and after weight loss, uh, he can, can come back. The only risk is the migration of the gastric pouch. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, I saw some, some, some cases, but this can happen also after your tachyonia. The only thing what you have to do is a paraesophagalionia. Okay. If there is paraesophageal hernia, then we must reduce and repair. Otherwise, no need to repair hiatal hernia, and we must go for uh, run by. And when patient will lose the weight, definite uh, everything will be okay. Uh, there's too much, too much uh, fat. Uh, maybe the liver became smaller with a uh, protein-enriched diet before, but in general, the fat in this area. And you have, uh, if you have a hernia, you have all the time. A lipoma behind the esophagus. Yeah. With the blood supply from the left side. Yeah. And you have to remove it. Otherwise, you have a recurrence. And this is very difficult. If it's a patient is so fat, you cannot see anything. Yeah. You, are, you are happy to find the stomach. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I think it's a, mis a mistake in this, uh, to make it. It's, it's easy. It looks easy. Yeah. You, you, you can do it. Oh, but don't. Uh, no need to do. No, I agree, sir. Sir, another thing that is the nightmare after ruin my gastric bypass is internal hernia. And really, it is a challenging, especially for someone who are also newcomers and uh, doing a surgery in such a center that is not a tertiary hospital. Uh, so uh, regarding closing of defects, sir, so that is also always the talk in international what is your protocol? Are you routinely close both defects? We are, we are closing this routinely. In the beginning, we have not done in every case. And uh, maybe it's, uh, it was a mistake. We, have, we saw many, many uh, internal hernias and also with incarcerations, also for another hospitals in Germany. And um, uh, we, we do it. Uh, you know, my friend Rob Rosenthal, we have worked together in Frankfurt, uh, Northwest Hospital. Uh, he said it's not necessary. He's not he never done a, a closure. And maybe it, the closure can be also a risk point if you make it not consequently. The patient losing uh, fat mass in the abdominal, and you have some sutures, and they are not really uh, uh, tight. And with a fat loss, you have maybe a more dangerous, smaller uh, effect. Opening. Yeah. Yeah. I will be doing this, and in the period we have seen much less. Uh, when you are <coughs> sir, another question uh, regarding this uh, uh, closing technique: Are you preferred to interpret suture or pierce suture? Uh, because this will be also your message for our viewers. Which yeah, if, if somebody is somebody will show you a demonstration, he will take a lot of uh, time to make a running uh, suture because the defect that you have to close is between 12, 14, and sixteen centimeters. Yeah. So therefore, we are using a part of the momentum also to put it in, in, into the um, uh, Peterson uh, uh, space and we try, try to close it from the 
peritoneum to peritoneum and fixation also of the, uh, but with single sutures, single sutures, but non-absorbable. This is about non-absorbable. Non-absorbable. But sir, another question. So because you have mentioned when before uh, closing the defects, you have faced many cases of internal hernia. So these internal hernia were, which point were more in JJ or in uh, Peterson, what was your experience? Peterson, Peterson. Uh, Most of short, cases were in Peterson. Uh, two, two short, yeah. <coughs> two short of them. Uh, most of them were in Peterson defects. Uh, yeah, we know that's also in, in relationship. Uh, if you have a longer bile pancreas the limp, then you have a higher incidence uh, of internal herniation. As we said, you know, in the United States, we, have, we had never seen internal hernias in the beginning because we have mainly done open gastric bypass surgeries uh, with a bile pancreas limb of 30 centimeters or 15. I reoperated some patient with iron bypass also from the US Army staying here in Germany. This, uh, this patient has a very short limb and this uh, no, 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 no chance to get internal herniation. And after open surgery, you have a lot of additions, but with a laparoscopic area and prolonging the limb length. This is a starting point. Of so maybe, the, sir, in, uh, in open surgery, because when we manipulate the small bowel and with the gloves and there is adhesions, and due to adhesions, there was no defect. But in laparoscopic, there is less chance of intestinal adhesions. Maybe this is the cause now uh, we are facing more internal hernia after laparoscopic surgery. Yes. Uh, yes. Sir, sir, now we are because uh, uh, hopefully this is this, uh, we have you have conveyed your message for our viewers. We have talked about uh, pre op and patient selection and also some technical points of Ruan Vai. <laughs> sir, now we will go ahead uh, for post op because again uh, we will I will highlight some. Uh, issues that we can face after one my gastric bypass. Sir, what is your protocol? You have mentioned you follow your patients after one year and after seven years endoscopically, all types of bariatric surgery, especially uh, Ruan Y, because now we are talking about Ruan Y gastric bypass. So what was your common finding after Ruan Y uh, endoscopic finding after one year or after seven years? Yeah, after one, one year, just to control uh, of, about the development of a candy cane uh, syndrome is uh, developing uh, of, uh, in, in case of uh, if we have uh, ulcerations or something. It's just a starting point to see how it, lo how it looks. Uh, we have a, um, a drop out after four to five years of many patients. Uh, we started to this um, very straight control in the last year because now I have much more time. I'm operating only one uh, week, and I have a still an own department for endoscopy, so I have uh, enough time to uh, call all my patients from the last years uh, back and to see what's going on. The main interest was a uh, uh, MGB technique. Uh, for who and why, you see the dilatation of the gastrointestinal is uh, nearly all patients. Sometimes they're wondering. We also some patients we had looks like in the beginning. Uh, yeah. But this is the main problem, dilatation of the alimentary lip is a real problem. Then you know, became the upper small intestine, became a new reservoir, a new stomach. Sir, regarding this uh, uh, silent marginal ulcer, have you faced such a cases? There is no symptom, but there is a ulcer. Yes, yes. This is uh, sometimes uh, very, very often, but you have it also, especially in smokers. You ask a smoker, do you have any, any problems? Uh, you have pain, or you say no, 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 no. And you look inside, and you see a small ulceration. Unfortunately, sir. Another question. This is a personal question. Now, in 2022, which percentage of your bariatric surgery belongs to ruin by gastric bypass? Now it is. So the, the, pri the primary, uh, primary ruin by gastric bypass. It's approximately uh, uh, one third or a quarter of all all the patient. Yeah, uh, the MGB is at the moment. Uh, uh, the leading procedure is the second point, but I'm doing uh, much more, much more um, changes as a revisionary surgery from sleeve to wound by gastric bypass. Uh, I believe it was a mistake. Uh, if you do a, a switch from sleeve to MGP, you need a completely new procedure. You have to start again uh, in the antrum uh, resection and perform a new 
uh, loose leaf because this leaf is otherwise is, dilated. Yeah. So and then yeah, this patient had 144 patients in, in total, which had a sleeve, then a MGB at the end point a rune wire with resizing. 144. This statistic was uh, done for three months approximately. So, uh, it's a, it's, it looks easy. Huh? It looks easy to go from a sleeve uh, to rune wire gasic pipeline. It's much easier, but you cannot use the upper part of the sleeve as a new gasic pouch. You have to transect horizontally very high and then the calibration tube, and then you resect the small part of the sleeve in direction to the spleen, and then uh, starting. This is completely different. Understand, sir. Understand absolutely, sir. Regarding this, uh, have you faced? Definitely, you have faced uh, intractable uh, marginal ulcer after run by gastric bypass. Have you <coughs> response to medication? No response to medicine and conservative uh, therapy. And so uh, you did any surgical intervention. Can you share any experience? So in the beginning, it was uh, not very clear. Uh, the connection was not uh, stable. Yeah, yeah. Sir, in the case, uh, so intractable marginal ulcer yeah. after uh, ruan by gastric bypass and surgical intervention. Yeah, yeah we, are, we are some, some patients. Uh, every, every surgeon can uh, remember the name. We're coming again, again, again. You make estimation of gastrin, you make uh, everything. Um, there are some cases that are unclear what, what is the background. We're coming again, 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 again. Yeah, and no, I had one of these, one of these uh, patients, the last one, uh, he had a sleeve, then he had a problem with the sleeve, uh, reflux problems, then, uh, and weight regain, then we performed the MGB, and then we switched to the rule why, because a lot of ulcerations. And uh, he came back and somebody make a, a gastric pouch resection. At the end point, patient came and said, I will disconnect everything. Just go back to normal anatomy and starting completely new again. And complete anatomy was not possible because one part was the sleeve was gone, yeah? but all the limb length, everything. Yeah. And uh, finally, uh, he was um, free of any symptoms for three months. And uh, four weeks ago, he called me uh, again, saying for burning, burning, and cannot understand. Sir, sometimes, so uh, what's, my, uh, what's my point? So maybe in such a case, there is more production of acid and this uh, perital, uh, uh, so maybe uh, <coughs> is more than a normal, I have no idea because uh, I don't know, uh, have you any technique to measure in such a cases? Yes, we. We, we measure gastrin, we rule out gastrinoma, we rule out other cause of acid production. Can we also measure uh, perital, uh, I don't know, a reservoir in such a case and maybe more? Yeah, I know, I know, uh, maybe at the end point, we have to perform a pH metry to see it's, it's real acid or something else. Uh, maybe um, I don't yeah. know. <coughs> I have no answer to all. To all uh, open questions. There are many still uh, many questions open. Absolutely agree, sir. Sir, yeah, the, the problem is also with the gastrin. Uh, we told the patient we need a gastrin estimation. Then you have to stop the PPI medication for I don't know two weeks or three weeks before we do the gastrin estimation. He said, "No, no, it's too much uh, pain. I don't like to uh, to stop my. Uh, we were not able to perform a gastrin estimation." Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, regarding weight regain, because another is see, this is the issue after Ruan Y, because Ruan Y overall is a uh, restrictive procedure. Now, yes, your protocol is BP limb is more than 100 centimeter and more male absorptive. Definitely, initially, when uh, your BP limb was short, there was more chance of uh, weight regain. Now, in this, this protocol, what is my question regarding your BP limb? Have you started this BP limb? Last year, just one year, this BP limb more than 100? No, uh, more, more than three years. More than three years. And now we must... Yeah, more than three years. More than three years. Sir, if we compare, so now... Yeah, when, when, when weight loss is much, much better, you know. If somebody has a weight regain, 
uh, you have an easy way. The easy way is the first option to make a ring augmentation, a minimizer, or you make an overstitch endoscopically. So this takes, it will help a little bit for one year or less, and then you have the same problem. The only thing what you can do is prolonging the beauty pancreas at the lip. Now we can go distalization. You prefer in such a case when their BP limb is 50, 60, so weight regain. So one of the option. Yeah, well, you know, distalization is a bad word. Yeah, yeah. We it's can increase BP limb. Yeah, in increasing the, BP, the distalization makes a shorter common channel. Yeah. This is a difference. This is a disaster. Yeah. I saw many, many distal gastric bypass from the United States. And we are really sick after 10 years. Agree. Yeah. So we increase BP limb and must save a common channel, and then we can go ahead and we can achieve the best results. Uh, sir, regarding so uh, because I know and really again so much thanks because I know uh, in this situation uh, you cooperate <laughs> with us. Uh, sir, regarding because now you have experience of ruin by gastric bypass and one of the pioneer of ruin by gastric bypass, definite. What is your main concern? after ruin by gastric bypass at this stage. And already you have decreased your number of ruin by gastric bypass. Yeah, we have the problem of uh, ulcerations, the internal hernias, um, but this can be very uh, uh, treated. Uh, the vitamin deficiencies are the, depends from the supplementation. Our one thing is sometimes unsolved is the dumping. Uh, dumping is a uh, real risk point. We have seen also some Dumping cases after sleeve gastrectomy, it's rare, but we have seen this with a, a rapid emptying after sleeve gastrectomy. Uh, we had some patients at night, low bl blood sugar, and we placed all the time microchips under the skin and uh, measured for one week, 24 hours, uh, blood sugar levels. And then we saw at uh, after midnight, uh, also sleeve patients suffering from dumping. It's rare, rare, but we saw some some cases. But this is a real problem. This is Dumping. a problem, sir. How you predict future of ruin by gastric bypass? Now maybe with a longer pancreatic limb. It's a long term, more long term, stable in the weight loss, and it's at, it will be all the time the best anti reflux procedure. The best anti reflux procedure, as a, it means, gastroesophageal reflux. Um, for everybody who is overweight or obese. As if somebody asked me for a reflux procedure with a BMI of 30 and asking for fundamentation, I would say, no, no, no. No fundamentation. There's a rule by bypass and maybe you have to adapt the limb leg. In this case, you can have a short B pancreatic limb. But you need at least 70 centimeters Cruelly. of alimentary. Cruelly. So sure, sure. 50 will be uh, uh, 50 will be BP and uh, 70 yes. will be rule him in such a case, sir. So much thanks. Sir, your message for our youngsters who are just now going to start ruin by gastric bypass or newcomers in bariatric surgery. Yeah, this is completely um, changed for the youngsters at the moment. At the moment. It will be the best training model for complex gastrointestinal surgery and also the starting point for robotic surgery. Because this is you know, in one, uh, one reach, like the uh, urologist uh, in a small pelvis area uh, working with a robot accident, you can do it in a hiatal region and to train it. If you're starting then to make other procedures like pancreas resection, whatever, this is the best training model and you need uh, uh, in a team with two or three surgeons, you need at least uh, 20 procedures. Uh, it takes a bit longer after between 20 and 40 has the same time and no complications. If you're doing this uh, in a team, uh, standardized as a best training model. So I believe in the robotic, but not in this type of robotic that we have at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Sir, so much thanks, sir, sir, for your cooperation and always you are supportive, you are encouraging, and definitely we need your support. We will continue this series of Ruin by Gastric Bypass till June. And uh, so much thanks, my viewers, that always uh, this is your support. And if you have any question from professor, you can ask in comments. 
sir, you want to add anything? No, I will just uh, show this uh, short. For somebody has no more questions, we have yet in our guessing bypass. For the guessing bypass, it's a very complex, very uh, great book from Zhao Ettinger. Just a moment. Uh, with all the detailed questions for Ruin Y guessing bypass, show the moment. I'm not sure. That will be open, sir. That just yeah. click that. Um, this is a guessing bypass book. Uh, just published by Springer um, two years ago, so 2020, after the death of Jao Ettinger. Uh, you know him, he was in Bahia, he was all the time for the Frankfurt meeting. Yeah? And you have all the questions uh, here inside, uh, when you can imagine all the details for the guessing papers. Uh, procedure, also the endoscopic um, things. And I, I wrote also some uh, uh, chapters here. It's very, very interesting uh, book if you need to more have detailed information. The same uh, we have published for the Zeef gastrectomy, for the MGB, for the intergastric balloon, and for all the procedures. So it's not an advertisement, just information. No, no, sir, this is very good, sir, because uh, for our viewers, always they ask uh, such a reference, and in my opinion, uh, this is great opportunity for them uh, to know about such a reference. We have also for this book from Sancha Akarbal is also a great thing in the perfect Steve gastrectomy uh, from Michel Garnier. And so I wrote a chapter here also. We have also two books now. Uh, uh, Alza Bach from Kuwait published also a book about Steve gastrectomy. And so we have now literature very complex for all for all interest that surgeons, if you like to have more, they are also available as ebook. Yeah. Okay. I will stop. Yeah, yeah, sir. So much thanks, sir. Really, so much thanks. And this, in my opinion, this is a, a great opportunity for our viewers. If someone want to know more about bariatric surgery, sleep gastrectomy, MGB, also ruin my gastric bypass, this is a standard. <laughs> reference and you can go ahead and know more about bariatric surgery. Again, so my thanks, uh, Professor, really, you are always supportive. We will continue this series till June 2022, and then we will go ahead uh, with the metabolic surgeries in low BMI for six months, and 2023, we will go for redo. And next week also, we will be with another uh, well-known bariatric surgeon, and we will talk about uh, this one, my gastric bypass. Uh, always Tuesday, 10 p.m. the Y time. We are live and we will continue. We, we, we need your sports, my viewers. And this all sessions is due to your sport. Sir, again, really so much thanks. And it, it was, I personally, I learned a lot and definitely it will be a great message for all of my viewers. Now I have to go to the soccer game, Netherlands against Germany. <laughs> okay. So much thanks, sir. Thank you, sir. Have a nice time, sir. Thank you, bye sir. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.